In this video, I'm going to demonstrate my Sinclair ZX80 emulator running on the Raspberry Pi Pico. So I've got my Raspberry Pi Pico back here. I've got a USB keyboard plugged in and also the VJ monitor plugged into this side. And on the actual Raspberry Pi Pico at the minute is running my terminal VT100 emulator. Uh, but the, I've made my emulators for the Sinclair computers just shortcut keys off of the function keys. So if I press Shift F5, it will take me into the ZX80 emulator. It just changes screen mode. It switches down from 6, 6, 640 pixels across the screen down to 320 pixels across the screen, which is more appropriate for a Sinclair ZX80. So I can program it like a Sinclair ZX80. So if I just type in a simple program, The program just uh, prints up the character set which is in the ZX80. Uh, but I can also load games. So you don't put any file name for the ZX80 when you load the game, so you just hit enter. And I've got a function which just intercepts the loading function in the ZX80. And I can type in a, um, a file name here. So if I load the Space Invaders program, and it loads through the, the actual loading function on ZX80, so this is actually loading like it would be loading off of the tape. And when I'm running this emulator on a Raspberry Pi, because the Raspberry Pi has cores which run at one gigahertz, it actually loads eight times faster than it loads on the Pico, because the Pico only runs at 125 megahertz. So it takes a bit longer to actually load the games. When it comes to doing the Spectrum emulator, I can actually load snapshots on the Spectrum emulator, so they, they load instantly. I haven't put the code in yet on the Spectrum emulator to actually emulate loading like a tape file. So it just takes a few seconds. Uh, after actually demonstrating this, I will go through some of the code that I've had to do. So I, I did my Jupyter Ace emulation video last, or the video before last, and I just talked through some of the code which I needed to do to change it from a a Linux running on Linux to running on Raspberry Pi Pico, and I'll do that after after I actually demonstrated this. Just demonstrate the Space Invaders program running. There weren't that many games for the ZX80 uh, because most of the time it just ran in what's known as fast mode. So that when when you ran it, the display just went kind of blank while it was actually doing the computing, and then they learned how to actually perform what the ZX81 does and so to actually display the the graphics whilst the actual whilst it's actually pr pr uh, running code during the blanking periods of the display and they sort of emulated what was happening on, on the ZX81 on, and actually wrote some games for the ZX80 but not, none of the games were really that brilliant uh, so even though this this is a fairly good you know, Space Invader program for the ZX80 uh, but it's not not really it won't sort of entertain you for that long um, and then in my emulator I can just do a CPU reset so in order to get the emulators running on a Raspberry Pi Pico one of the things I had to do is create a kind of virtual file system for the Raspberry Pi Pico because the Raspberry Pi Pico doesn't have a file system of its own it just really has C and uh, the file operations just they really kind of work on the UART port and, thing, and whatever's built into the Raspberry Pi Pico. So what I had to do was I had to take all the files I needed, which were my ROM files and the game files for the emulators. So here I've got a, a game file for the emulator. So it's a Space Invader one, which I demonstrated at the start of the video. I had to convert them into include files, for header files for the C. So this is, like I say, one of the files. I create an automated process which goes across the directory of files that I want to convert and converts them into this format. So at the top you've just got the standard, don't include this file twice. Uh, then the data itself is all a, an array of characters and the actual variable name of the file is based on the path and file name of where it's supposed to be in the file system. And the first set of data, set of characters in the file is a null terminated string of the path and file name that the data is for. So like I said, it's null terminated at the end there. Then you've got two bytes that follow, which uh, represent, get converted into a short integer, and they represent how many bytes follow as the actual data of the file. So then just the data of the actual file itself 
follows in, in binary form. And then I take all of those files and I, I put them into include files. So I include all the header files that I want for the, so this is the ROM for the ZX80. And then all the demonstration games that I'm loading into the flash memory for, um, for Pico. And I've got the ROM for the ZX81 uh, and all the games which I'm including for that as um, to be used as my demo games. And then a Spectrum ROM and games. And then I create a file directory. So this is a bit like a directory on the disk. It's just an array of the data files, which I just demonstrated before. And so I can just iterate through this. These are just pointers to the data files. So they point to the, this data. So the first line of data in, in the data file is the uh, path and file name. So I can go through this kind of directory and just look at the string that these point to. I can search for the file I want. And then when I found the file I want, all I need to do is after the string, I read two bytes, which is the data length. And then after that, those two bytes is the actual data. And I just read the data length itself. So it's kind of creating a virtual file system within the Raspberry Pi Pico. It's nice and quick and easy to, to do that, to get this up and running. It is actually, it would actually be possible to actually make it so it could save files as well, but that's beyond what I'm attempting at this point. Um, so then what I do is I've got this, my file functions within my emulator. This one loads a tape file. I've got to somehow make it so that when I call things like F open, it can open the file system on my Raspberry Pi Pico, which I've just created. So I create these wrapper functions, so W underscore. And so throughout my emulator, wherever I do an F open or an F read, I just put an F un sorry, W underscore in front of it. And that way I can call these wrapper functions. And if I'm compiling for a Pico, I just call my own function which does my own f open otherwise if I'm it compiles for a system which has a file system it just calls a normal f open and that way I don't have to keep re uh, editing code with, uh, within the actual emulator itself I just have the uh, I just call the wrap functions and if I ever need to make any other kind of file systems or anything I can just add add to the code under this uh, and then finally um, I create the code which is the Pico file system and all it does is it uses that file directory array and it can so if I do an F open it can loop it can loop for all of those looking at the path and file name that's been provided until it finds one and if it doesn't find one it returns a null header uh, null hand, handle sorry and if it does find find one it just it returns a standard kind of uh, file handle um, it can only open one file at a time, but that's all I, need, all I need. I've done the minimum amount of coding that I've needed to do. Uh, and then I provide all the handle, uh, all of the functions for doing things like F close, F seek, just things which I've used within my code, F tell, F read. Uh, and F put C, which doesn't do it. Like I said, I haven't done the writing of anything, but I need this just as a dummy function. So that whenever, if someone tries to save something, it tries, it kind of pretends like it saved it, but it hasn't actually done anything. 